Power Assisted Rack and Pinion Steering is a very compact, direct, and precise steering system. The power steering pump is belt driven from the crankshaft. The pump with the bracket is mounted to the engine block and its purpose is to provide hydraulic assist to the system. This cutaway pump shows why. The main components are the pump housing, drive shaft, rotating group, and pressure relief valve. A control valve in the pump regulates maximum flow. As the rotor turns, the vanes follow the inside of the ring. This draws in power steering fluid. As the rotor turns further, the chamber decreases in volume to force the power steering fluid out of the pump. The hydraulic components in a power rack and pinion system include the rotary control valve in the top hat, the hydraulic lines to the rack cylinder, and the rack piston. The rotary control valve is a precision assembly. The valve consists of a stub shaft, spool valve, torsion bar and pinion gear. Inside the valve, the torsion bar is a press fit in the pinion, while the other end is held to the stub shaft by a pin. The spool valve is anchored to the pinion by another pin. Steering input is through the stub shaft. As the driver turns the steering wheel, the stub shaft twists the torsion bar. The spool valve is attached to the pinion, which resists turning because the road is holding it. A hydraulic passage opens when the stub shaft groove rotates under a spool valve groove. Power steering fluid flows from the pump through the valve to one side of the rack piston. The force on the piston causes rack movement which turns the wheels. With a basic understanding of system operation, let's see how steering system complaints are diagnosed. There are four steering system diagnostic steps. Verify the complaint. Eliminate non-steering systems as the source of the complaint. Perform preliminary steering system checks and symptom diagnosis. Start by performing the first diagnostic step. Drive the vehicle to verify that an abnormal condition does exist. The second step is to eliminate non-power steering system concerns as the source of the complaint, like the front suspension system. The know-how reference manual has a checklist you can use to help isolate the steering system. The third step is to perform steering system checks. The know-how manual has another checklist to help narrow down steering system complaints. This checklist finds most of the steering faults and only takes about five minutes to run through. The fourth step is symptom diagnosis. This will help you find the more difficult sources of noises. The know-how reference manual has complete symptom diagnosis charts. Each chart covers a lot of ground. In a nutshell, the chart describes a problem, explains when it occurs, lists all the possible causes, and then offers the solution. Let's look at just a few of these symptoms. Shutter is a condition that can exist in any vehicle. Shutter is not caused by the steering system, but the steering system does display the symptoms. Shutter usually occurs during slow, steady steering wheel movements while the vehicle is stopped or moving very slowly, as in a parking maneuver. Shutter vibrates the steering rack and then vibrates the entire vehicle. The steering system otherwise operates normally. Shutter is actually caused by the engine's firing pulses. Since the engine turns the pump, engine speed determines pump flow. Idle speed actually changes several times per second. A change in engine speed changes pump flow. When idle speed is graphed and plotted, it really looks like this. The engine constantly speeds up and slows down, resulting in RPM fluctuation. This fluctuation looks like a wave or ripple. 
This ripple is transmitted to the power steering pump by the drive belt and pulley. Due to these changes in engine speed, the pump discharges a rippling column of power steering fluid. During a turn, the torsion bar twists to open the spool valve port. Rippling fluid enters through the valve to the rack cylinder and vibrates the rack while moving it. The pinion and spool valve vibrate too. As the spool valve hole moves over the groove and back, the valve opens and closes. Each time the valve opens, the rippling fluid acts on the rack. This cycle repeats 35 to 40 times a second during the turn to cause shutter. The effects can be felt and heard throughout the vehicle. Shutter is not due to a faulty steering gear or pump. The problem can only be solved by removing pressure ripples from the steering fluid flow. One effective method of repairing a shutter condition is the installation of a new tuned hose. From outside, a tuned hose looks just like a regular hose. Inside, a steel tube extends into the interior of the hose. Rippling power steering fluid flows through the tubing. Then some fluid flows back between the tubing and the hose. The ripple then doubles back and enters the main flow again. This tuned fluid, having traveled a different distance, is not in step with the ripples from the pump. The frequencies of the two ripples are staggered. The ripple effectively cancels out. The result is a solid column of fluid. Another repair for a shutter involves an expansion hose. An expansion hose changes length and diameter with every ripple. Expansion hose construction allows for this change by using a softer hose compound than a standard hose. The braiding that surrounds the inner hose can be manufactured with fewer braids, with different braid angles, or with less braid tension. This hose acts like the accumulator in a transmission. As the hose reacts to fluid ripples, the ripples are dampened due to the hose expansion. Routing is important for high expansion hoses. As the hose width expands, its length contracts. Be careful to position the hose away from the exhaust manifold or components with sharp edges. A third shutter repair involves replacing the crankshaft torsional damper on the 3300 engine with a newly designed damper. The new damper cancels the ripples before the drive belt transfers them to the pump pulley. The repairs for a shutter do not cover all car lines because shutter is not apparent in all models. A tuned hose for a Regal is designed for that vehicle, and other vehicles require their own repair. The same is true of the high expansion hose and the damper pulley. Consult the service bulletins for the proper part numbers. Steering system noise can have many causes and may occur only under certain conditions. Pump and gear noises are different. Let's talk about steering gear noises first. The noises that are likely to be written on a repair order are steering system clunk, hiss, rattle, or squeak. A clunk noise can be the result of loose rack attachments to the frame, a loose or tight adjuster plug, or a loose pinion nut. All should be torqued to specification. If the rack piston is loose or unseated, the only option is to replace the steering gear. A slight hiss while turning is common. Hiss results from fluid flowing past the grooves in the stub shaft. If hiss is excessive, check the fluid level. If the level is low, add fluid and bleed the system according to the know-how reference manual. The pump may be the source of an unusually loud hiss. If a hiss is heard without turning the steering wheel, the pump rotating group may be worn and should be replaced. If the hiss is not coming from the pump, replace the steering gear. Steering system rattle is usually an intermittent noise caused when a pressure hose touches the vehicle. In these cases, reposition the hose. 
A loose or worn tie rod end can rattle. Loose tie rod ends must be replaced. Another cause of rattle is a loose steering gear mount. If the mount is loose, torque it to specification. The adjuster plug can rattle too. This may be accompanied by a complaint of very light steering. Torquing it to specification should repair the complaint. The last steering gear noise we will talk about is squeak. Squeak is usually caused by a pinion seal that needs grease. Power steering pump noise is slightly different from steering gear noise. Pump chirp, groan, growl, rattle, swish, and whine are the types of noise to listen for. A chirp or loud squeal is almost always due to a worn or loose drive belt. Replace a worn drive belt and adjust tension on loose belts using a belt tension gauge. Do not guess when it comes to belt tension. Pump groan may be due to oil starvation. If the reservoir level is low, there is probably a leak in the system. Check all hoses, lines, and connections for traces of power steering fluid. Replace components as necessary. Another cause of pump groan is a loose mounting bracket. Torque the pump mounting bolts to specification. Pump growl is usually due to a restriction in a pressure hose, rack cylinder line, or inside the gear. Use the power steering system analyzer, tool J25323A, to locate the restriction. Two simple connections place the analyzer in the high pressure line between the pump and the gear. The analyzer measures system back pressure and flow at idle. Flow at 700 PSI and maximum pressure at minimum flow. The analyzer also checks control valve operation and helps locate internal rack piston leakage. Another cause of pump growl is internal pump leakage. The analyzer can be used to find this complaint as well. The only remedy for this condition is to replace the pump rotating group components. Pump rattle has two possible causes. A loose or an improperly installed pulley can rattle. If so, remove and inspect the pulley and shaft for damage. If the pulley is fastened by a bolt, install the pulley and torque the bolt to specification. The second cause could be a scored bearing due to oil starvation. If the bearing is scored, replace the pump. A swish noise is most likely due to a faulty control valve. The valve is not closing properly and must be replaced. Pump whine begins when low levels score the bearings, pressure plate, and vanes. If the noise continues after the fluid level is correct, replace the pump rotating group components. The know-how reference manual contains diagnostic charts and specifications. An organized diagnostic approach will help you quickly find power rack and pinion steering system problems. When all power-assisted rack and pinion steering components work together properly, the result is a Buick that responds with effortless precision. That's the difference between a street and the great American road.